Hi, and welcome to episode number five of Pangea Software's Behind the Scenes series. I'm Brian Greenstone, the president and CEO of Pangea Software, and this is my office. This is where every game that Pangea Software has made since 1997 has been created. And the reason that we're here today is because instead of showcasing one particular iPhone game, I'm going to talk about iPhone game development in general. Now, people ask me lots of questions about iPhone development. So I'm going to go through a few of the top most important questions that people ask. The first question is this. I don't know how to program, but I've got the best idea for an iPhone app ever. Well, I get three to five emails and phone calls every single day from people who claim to have the best iPhone app idea ever. It's gotten so bad that I actually never answer my phone anymore. I have to screen my calls, otherwise I'll never get anything done. And unfortunately, the truth of the matter is, is that if all you have is an idea, it's going to be very difficult for you to get that app implemented. And the reason is this. The iPhone is really, really hot right now. And anyone who knows how to program the iPhone is pretty busy doing that. So it's hard for you to find anybody. Now this is great if you're already an iPhone developer. You are in a superb market right now. It's a very hot market and there is a lot of work for iPhone programmers right now. Now the second question that's kind of related to that is, is it difficult to develop for the iPhone? And the answer to that is no. Developing for the iPhone is ridiculously easy. I mean, if you already know how to program a Mac, then going over to the iPhone is about one day's worth of work. It's really, really easy. Um, if you're new to the iPhone or, or the Mac, uh, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised at just how simple it is because we have great development tools. We've got Xcode, which is a fantastic compiling environment. We've got uh, Interface Builder, which builds our Windows menus and things like that, and that's really cool, and they work together. And you're going to find that programming the Mac and programming the iPhone are basically the same thing. So you get like a two-for-one special. If you learn to program the iPhone, you've already learned how to program the Mac. So you can work and do games on both platforms. It's really pretty cool. And you're going to have a lot of fun at it because it is a much easier platform to develop for than you know, the other platform that you may be coming from right now. Now, one thing worth mentioning is that there's a bit of a myth about Objective-C. And this myth tends to scare people off at the beginning. And the problem is, is that people are under this false impression that you have to write your entire iPhone app in Objective-C. This is totally not true. You can write your app in regular straight C or C++, whatever you prefer. You only have to write in Objective-C the things that interface with certain elements of the iPhone APIs. And this is usually uh, user interface elements. Um, the great thing is, is that Games do not use interface elements. They have their own interfaces, right? Games usually have their own menuing systems and, and all sorts of control schemes. So the only things that you really ever have to do for a game in, object, in Objective-C are the very basic things like accessing the accelerometer data, reading the touches, and just initializing your app from the get-go. So our largest app, Automatic, has well over 100,000 lines of code in it. But out of that 100,000 lines of code, you know, maybe a hundred or so, maybe a hundred, two hundred lines of code in that whole game are in Objective-C. So don't let Objective-C scare you off. It's actually a really, really good object-oriented language. I mean, it, it runs circles around C++. But regardless of that, I tell people that they should still write their apps in straight C because straight C is kind of the most universal language. So if you want to port your game over to another platform later, it's going to be a lot easier if your game is in straight C. So Write your app in straight C, write everything you have to in order to talk to the iPhone in Objective-C, and you're good to go. Now, the next question is possibly the most important question of all, and it's the one with the most difficult answer. And the question is this, how do I promote my app? Well, there are tens of thousands of other apps on the App Store, and you're competing against all of those, right? So how do you get your app seen above everybody else's and become a successful hit? Well, let me start by saying that your goal is this. Your goal is to get your app into the top 100. Because when your app is in the top 100 list, it's magically visible by everybody. And your sales skyrocket once everybody can see your app. Apps that are in the top 100 list tend to be selling over 1,000 copies a day. Sometimes well over 1,000 copies a day. Uh, I think when Enigma was the number one app uh, sometime way back, 
I think we peaked out at about 18,000 copies a day. It's not bad. So the question is, how do you get yourself into that top 100 list? Well, a lot of it depends on a successful product launch. So when your app goes live, you need to write up a press release and you need to send that press release out to everybody in the media that you can find. Everybody that covers iPhone stories, Mac news, uh, game stories, mobile news, you know, whatever, anything related to this, send that press release out. Now on a similar note, you also need to get reviewers to do reviews of your game. Do reviews on websites, blogs, uh, YouTube videos, very important. And Apple gives you 50 promo codes for every version of your app. Don't give those promo codes out to your friends and your family. You're just throwing them away if you do that. You need to save those promo codes and give them out to the media. Get them to use those promo codes to try your game and do reviews. It's critical. Now, the one thing that you need to do yourself to sell your game is make it look good on the App Store. What's the first thing people see when they go to the App Store? Well, it's an icon. So you need to have a really good standout icon that makes people stop as they're scanning down the list and go, ooh, what's that? And then they click on it. Now, what's the next thing they see? Well, they see your product page. And on your product page, you're given five spots for screenshots. The first screenshot is called the primary screenshot. And it's the most important one because it's the big one that people see first. This should be the very best screenshot that you have. It's got to sell the game to the customer. Now, I've seen a lot of people totally screw this up and I just want to slap them sometimes because I've seen primary screenshots that people put up and they'll be like the menu screen from a game or the title screen from a game. This is just awful. Why would anybody do that? This is supposed to be selling your game and nobody cares about menu screens and title screens. They want to see, well, what, what, what is this game? What, what am I buying here? You've only got five screenshots. Don't waste any of them on menu screens or title screens. Every one of those should show what the game is. Show the gameplay, sell the game to the customer. Very important. Okay, the last question is the question everybody always wants to know, but they're always a little timid about asking, and that's how much money should I expect to make? Okay, obviously if you have one of the number one hits, yeah, you're going to be making a lot of money. You could be making 250, 500,000, you know, a million, over a million. It's easy to do because a lot of people that have been in that top spot have become iPhone millionaires. Now, are you going to become the next iPhone millionaire? Well, honestly, probably not. You know, the the statistically, it's kind of against you. But aim for that goal because you never know. But what you should do is prepare yourself for a much wider range of results, right? I mean, it's pretty obvious. It's like playing the lottery. Now, I know a lot of people that do iPhone game development, and the amount of money that they make pretty much spans the entire gap here. On the low end, you can expect to make between $5 and $50 a day off of your app. But if your app is a pretty good one, you know, it doesn't have to be a top 100 hit, but it's a decent app, you know, it's got some unique iPhone-y features and it, you know, and you did a good job marketing it, then you can expect to make, you know, maybe a hundred to a thousand dollars a day. And at that point, you're actually starting to make real money. So it gets better and better. And, you know, like I say, the better app you have, generally the better you're going to do in the uh, income department, you know, so aim for the million, expect less, but I think no matter what happens, most people are always happy with what they make off the iPhone. It's a great platform to be on right now. Okay, that's the end of that. There were a whole lot of other questions that people asked me and we'll probably do more videos on this topic later. But next time, we're gonna go back to the usual format and I will be talking about our second best-selling game of all time and that game is Crow Mag Rally.